Hi, everybody. It is July 1, 2021. What are you looking at? You're looking at Lytton in British Columbia. Do you see what I see? Okay. Structures destroyed by fire in the heart of Lytton, British Columbia, seen by a helicopter. Gone. Everything gone. Trees. Fine. Home gone underneath these trees. Trees. I guess it, it hopped over some highway, I guess, or this uh, lake or river. Um, they're gone. Let's see if I can zoom in. Okay. All the trees are fine. And were there homes here? Did they just evaporate? Um, vaporize? This is a road. No, I think this is a hill, actually. I'm sorry. Um, the homes are gone. I'm sorry. This was a hit. I'm going to cry. I think I'm going to cry. I feel it in my stomach, my eyes. The town burnt down. The town burnt down. There is a lot of concern about um, tracking people and making sure that we have everyone in the community registered so that we know where they are and that they're safe. How chaotic is that process? Because by all accounts, this happened incredibly quickly. Amazing, really, that the mayor was able to get the word out to everybody in town to get out. Uh, how difficult is it now to track down all of those people? Because I gather they're not all in one spot, of course, either. That's right. Uh, Lytton has a highway that goes through it. It goes um, east and west, and um, people went what, with what they felt was the safest route. So part of the challenge today will be to find where people are, to connect people to um, emergency centers, and also to see what their needs are so that we can advocate with the, go with the provincial government to ensure that people's needs are met. Now, Jackie, I know we mentioned you were in Ashcroft, a nearby town. How far away are you from Lytton, and are you concerned that the town of Ashton may be impacted? Ashcroft, rather. Well, we're engulfed in smoke, and we're an hour away from Lytton. And uh, within my riding, I have three wildfires that are out of control right now. So I'm concerned in all those situations. We have people on evacuation alert. We have people evacuated, and we have the Lytton situation. So it's it's very tense. It's very scary, and it, <clears throat> excuse me, it's just the start of the fire season. It sounds terrifying to be on evacuation alert. That alone, how what are you hearing from people in your constituency? Are, are people trying to leave now preventatively? Well, um, we we went through the 2017 wildfires. And it was horrendous in our area. Uh, the Elephant Hill fire was in my riding, started in my riding. And uh, that fire burned for quite some time. People were evacuated for weeks at a time. So we do have some experience, unfortunately. And I think that the TNRD leadership is incredible. And the province, um, you know, our frontline workers are doing the best they can. So our job is to ensure that people are safe and to make sure that they have the support systems that they need during evacuation or evacuation alert. So we're working hard through my office, through the MP's office, and through the provincial government. Oh, okay. So, it happened fast, happened very fast, and once again, what we are seeing
are the, the signatures that these homes were hit with directed energy weapons. We've seen these fires over and over and over again. Streets are clean, trees all around, all around. But every home is leveled. How fast was this? Really unbelievably fast. Unbelievably fast. I mean, there was only, when I posted the video earlier, what did I hear? There was only like um, a medical center, a few buildings in the town of Lytton. And now, how many hours later? The oh my God. Well, you know, it's, it's clear. You're looking at it. It's right in your face. Something is very wrong with this picture. Something's very wrong with this picture. I mean, okay, I guess the fire came here. You know, you see a few black strips. The homes, everything's gone in it. These homes, everything's gone. The sinks, the ovens, everything is gone once again. Oh my God, I feel sick. I really feel sick. Well, I wanted to see if there were any aerials, uh, aerial views of the fires, and I have not been able to find any. But I did want to point out, I do have a playlist, Directed Energy Weapons, and um, I had, oh, this is for Never Lose Truth, and I had change the title. Okay, let's do that again. And it should read oh, Fires Save. Yay. Okay. And 115 115 videos of fires in California. I was looking for my videos on the Fort McMurray fire fire that must have been on Kafka Winston World uh, which got deleted by YouTube so there's a lot of information about directed energy weapons um, how they can uh, start fires I'm not saying that it was absolutely directed at look something is very off when you see, when you see, where is the article? When you see this, okay, and it does not look like a fire actually went through. I mean, there's no scarring on the roads or anything. You see all of these trees. You see how clean the streets are. And yet, the houses collapsed inside themselves. You know, the porcelain sinks and everything gone. Well, that should raise eyebrows. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, they don't raise their eyebrows anymore. They don't think. They just roll their eyes instead. That's unfortunate. But once again, we're seeing whole, you know, neighborhoods just taken out and... You know, you can see, see, these are directed energy weapon signatures. When you see the very defined um, area where it looks burnt and the house is gone, right here, you can see it over here and in other places. So, 
if you don't know anything about and I'm not saying directed energy weapons are the only I've seen some comments about um, the plasma which I haven't checked out yet um, but yes um, nanotechnology they can use so California and also other fires in Canada and Spain and all over the place um, you know laser weapons Australia I have a playlist on Australia fires on my backup channel which I had posted also on this playlist my backup channel never lose truth to Kafka so here we are fire season and well we're seeing evidence already and yeah this is my backup channel all of these were on the fires last year I also have on my backup channel more nanotechnology videos so the weather machine all right yeah this is very upsetting there was fire all over the place. It, it basically moves from one end of the street down to the other end. The village of Lytton in B.C. has been essentially wiped out by a fire that erupted with a warning Wednesday afternoon. The fire came upon the town. It had consumed it within 15 minutes. So people were literally running for their lives. The MP for the area says 90% of the community has been destroyed by the flames that quickly spread a day after the temperature hit 49.5 degrees Celsius, the hottest temperature ever recorded in Canada. We have to see whether there's anything worth returning to. Uh, so that's uh, the one image I've seen this morning from the Chilliwack Fire Department showed Main Street completely devastated and I'm just at a loss right now. News there likely isn't a community to go back to is hard on those who called the area home. Many unsure if their house is one of the few that still stands. And I've seen a couple pictures and you kind of get in your mind, well, it doesn't look like fire over there, so hopefully it's safe. But the other part of me says, well, everybody's saying how bad it is, it could be destroyed. And they told us to leave. And so whatever's there is there. And we don't know. Like everybody else, we're just sort of functioning until uh, uh, we can move, start moving forward and we don't know what direction that's going to be in. The fire moved so fast, many people left their home with just the clothes on their back. Things like medication and beloved possessions left behind. Traffic, um, right now, what's going through my mind is going through the evacuation. It's like, how fast did this happen? And could I gr grab that? And what if I grab this? And a lot of things go through your mind. Um, but when it's happening, it's like, just grab and go. Uh, so we looked at each other and said, we, we should start packing, I think. And so we, we have a travel trailer, so we hooked that up, and then from there, uh, RCMP showed up and said, hope you're packing that to leave. I said, yeah. So well, you only got 20 minutes to go. We're like, what? And so we freaked out and grabbed whatever we could. Some who evacuated ended up here in Merritt, where an emergency operations center has been set up. Some are staying with family, others in a hotel, waiting for more information as they try to figure out where to go from here. For City News in Vancouver. You know, I'm, I'm listening to some of these broadcasters and, well, the cause. This woman was just asked by the reporter, what's the cause of this fire? Well, the cause is still under investigation, Michael. Obviously, the conditions are very much a, a tinderbox. The mayor gave the evacuation order at supper time around 6 p.m. last night, and it did not take very long for things to just burst into flame. We are seeing this dramatic video of what the escape from Lytton looked like as, as cars winding down those smoky roads were passing buildings already engulfed 
in flames. You could hear uh, the urgency and the emotion in the mayor's voice when he talked to us last night. The fire was uh, was, was a wall about three, four feet high coming coming you know up to the up to the fence line. I drove through town and it was just smoke, flames. The wires were down. There were a couple of fire crews uh, that uh, were going door to door, and um, yeah, we were just getting people out as fast as possible. And those people. All right, I'll link below to this. You can listen. Uh, she interviews some of some of the people who were affected. Um, centers have been set up for the people forced to flee. One of them is east of Lytton in the city of Merritt. And that's where we find our Robin Gill tonight. Robin, what are you hearing from people? Well, mostly that they're concerned about their loved ones. They want to make sure that they got out safely because it was such a frenetic and chaotic exit from Lytton. And these families are scattered at evacuation centers right around the province that have been set up. But more than anything, there's that staggering stress that they've lost everything. An arena in Merritt, B.C. is a lifeline for the many who left Lytton with minutes to spare. Star Drynock's father stayed behind to help fight the fire, and she hasn't been able to find him. Have you heard anything from your dad? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's terrifying because I know he wouldn't, he wouldn't leave. Norman Drynock is a retired firefighter and wanted to help save what homes he could. He chose to stay, and we found out that he was the last one to stay on reserve to, to fight the fire and save as many houses as he can, and he didn't leave last night. It was a terrifying escape on a highway obscured by smoke. Chaotic. You barely see driving through the smoke, and, uh, and they kept uh, pushing us further toward Kalmuks, and they finally chased us right up to here. The wildfire overwhelmed the village of Lytton, home to about a thousand people. And Tony Sam has been told his house was reduced to nothing by the flames. Do you, do you know what's happened to your house at all? Gone. Nothing left. It's leveled. There's my mom's house too. Witnesses say there were sparks from a train coming through and wonder if that caused this wildfire. That'll be part of the investigation. Right now, the focus of firefighters is to stop the flames from spreading. They've come. All right. So that woman said it was a tinderbox, um, a tinderbox. You know. So you would think that these trees would have. There's not even any. It doesn't even look like any of them have been touched at all. So here we go again. Um, Ninety-seven degrees. Oh, it's they. Sh should have updated it. It's ten. It's quarter after nine p.m. Eighty-eight degrees. Okay. I have an ice pack on my back. I'm trying to stay cool. Well, tonight the death toll is rising from that historic heat wave broiling the west, and it's fueling a wave of dangerous wildfires. Here, CBS's Lilia Luciano. As the historic heat continues, the death toll is soaring. <laughs> Nearly 100 deaths have been confirmed so far in the western U.S. I worried that people were just going to think of it as a, as a nuisance, but it really has been like threatening it. In Canada, nearly 500 sudden deaths have been reported in British Columbia alone during the heat wave. Officials believe the increase in fatalities is likely linked to the extreme weather. Wildfires forced the town of Lytton, Canada to evacuate. It's about to get everyone that's stuck on that side of the mountain. Temperatures there had hit a record 121 degrees. Flames burnt 90% of the town. In the U.S., the heat is fueling 44 large fires across nearly a dozen states. The scorching temperatures in the Pacific Northwest have moved inland as doctors try to keep up with the emergency. We saw folks who were arriving with heat stroke who had to emergently be rapidly cooled, packed in ice in order to get their bodies' temperatures down. When is the end? When is the end? And tonight, concerns about farm workers who have worked in excessive heat for days. It's never been like this. 
On Saturday, a farm worker collapsed and died at work. It was more than 100 degrees at the time. And here in Spokane, at this hospital alone, heat-related admissions have gone up 15%. And Nora, most of those people are between the ages of 20 and 40. Nora O'Donnell interviewing Mishu Kaku, whatever the hell his name is, who is talking about, yes, we can send a trillion watt laser into a cloud and create rain. Wow. And then he starts talking about the weather modification that our military was conducting in Vietnam. And Nora interrupts him and says, oh, allegedly, allegedly that weather mod. No, Nora, do the freaking research. That's your job, right? It wasn't alleged. It happened. These people make me sick. Well, the fires in California. So the salt fire apparently is uh, the worst fire now. I believe it's 0% contained. Evacuations in the areas of the salt fire and the lava fire. It's near Redding, California, and at least a dozen homes and outbuildings destroyed. Here's an update if you wanted to check it out. Uh, salt fire. Okay, so, yep, here we go. The most significant is the salt fire in Shasta County, which prompted mandatory evacuations in the Lakehead area. It's 4,500 acres already burned. And here, uh, okay, they say that hot car parts or pieces of material may have come off a vehicle traveling north on Interstate 5 sometime between 1 and 1.30. Wow, okay, so they have that time period, just a half hour. Hot car pieces may have come off a vehicle. May. They don't know. But they want to know uh, if anybody can identify the vehicle. Okay. Lava fire, 25% contained, burned 19,680 acres as of 9 a.m. So, there's a tenant fire. And that's 6% contained. 9,439 acres as of 11 a.m. You can, I'll link below to this map and you can check out. They had an update on the salt fire at 330, uh, yeah, 4,500 acres and 0% contained. And I will link below to this. It also has many of the fires going right now. Stay safe, everybody. I am so sorry for all of, for all in Lytton, BC, those who have lost their homes in the salt fire. The links are below.